A massive time saver when it comes to recording MIDI is to use the auto quantize setting. And we're going to take a look at it in this video. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the tempo is where I want it. Now you can hear if it's where you want it by turning the click track on and basically pressing play. I'm happy with that. So you've got to make sure it's a tempo that you feel comfortable playing in time over. Next, I'm going up to the transport menu and I'm going into metronome settings. If you're not happy with the metronome sound, you can change it here. It's really easy. You can also change the accents. So if you're struggling with the accent on the first beat of the bar, there are lots of different options. The next thing I'm going to do is select a quantize setting. At the moment it's set to 1/8, which means it's quantizing onto eighth notes. You can use that little triangle button there to open up the main quantize settings. And this is going to be a little bit of trial and error. You may not get it right the first time. You can add swing and a few other things, but I'd recommend keeping it simple the first time you do this. Now, because we're going to cycle record over and over again, we need to set locators up on the top of the timeline. So you can use your pencil to drag these out. You can use the snap on off button to make sure that the locators lock on to the start and end of bars. Move the mouse around in the middle and you'll get a hand tool. And you can use this hand tool to move the locators around in your project. Now I'm going to turn on the cycle button in the transport. So the project's now going to cycle in between those two locators. And it's a matter of hitting record and starting to play. Now my playing's not exactly in time. So in this mode of recording, it's great because I can cycle and put parts down. But afterwards, I've got to double click on the event itself and go in and have a look to see if my parts are in time. And they're not perfectly in time. So to quantize them, I'd have to highlight the notes that I want to quantize. And then I can go to the quantize menu, which is also in the lower zone, or I can just hit Q on my computer keypad. And that's a shortcut to quantize the notes that you have selected. There's a faster way to quantize when it comes to loop recording. And there's a few ways we can actually get Cubase to treat the events that we're recording. Let's go up to the transport menu and go to MIDI record mode. Now there's a few options that we've got there. And these first three options deal with how Cubase is treating the events. Like I said, I'm going to select merge, which means that all the parts that I record are going to be merged together in the one event. I'm also turning on auto quantize and record. Now if I hit record and I start playing, the part should be perfectly in time. Let's have a look. And so far they are. But now it's missed a note. And that's because I've got the wrong quantize setting. So it's too low. So I'm going back to my quantize menu and I'm raising that up to one eighth. And now if I do that again, it should be quantizing the notes perfectly. Now you can see it's locked onto the grid. Cubase is great at showing you the grid behind the events that you're actually recording. So it's very clear to see if you're playing in time. And all of these parts are merged into the one event. If I double click on it, down the bottom I can see all of the notes and I can see that they're perfectly in time. And I can even go and edit them. You can create a drum map over in this menu and once you double click on the part down the bottom, you can see the actual drum parts and you can use a drumstick to edit the notes even further. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Please stop by the Cubase YouTube channel and subscribe for more videos just like this. I'll catch you there.